everyone, it's Reagan, and welcome to the start of another weekend reading vlog. It is ultra cozy in here, and I don't know if I mentioned, we got stockings. And Clay and I decided we're going the extra mile, and we are doing stocking stuffers for each other. Um, obviously, there's not much to keep us occupied, but we're each doing like surprise gifts, and just we're basically trying to create a scenario of like a childhood Christmas moment for each other because it's fun and why not? But welcome to the start of this weekend vlog. I'm hoping it's festive and I obviously hope to do a bunch of reading. Um, I have a one book I hope to read throughout this weekend. It is another long, highly anticipated fantasy read. Who's surprised? Not me. Um, so let's quickly chat about it and then I'll walk you through my plans for tonight. So this is the book I hope to read, Jade War by Fonda Lee. I've been dying to pick this up. It's just under 600 pages long and it is of course the sequel to Jade City which I read back in September and love so much. It is an Asian inspired urban fantasy story that's about like crime families going to war and it has to do with Jade which is a substance that some people can consume, it makes them stronger, faster, etc. Um, in the first one there was a kind of a major heating up of conflict between two families and a lot of it centered around the Jade trade. And this takes off right where the last one took off. Well, I'm assuming so. And it was a wild ride. So this is what I hope to read throughout the next couple of days. I am definitely giving myself a bit of an intense fantasy lineup. I'm essentially trying to read a few books before I record one video that I am really excited to make. But I want to read some books that I feel like might make that list before I make it. <laughs> so I read The Burning God. Um, last that's the last book I finished and now I want to read Jade War just so I can get all of my ducks in a row before I make that video but this might be exciting because this is gonna be a journey of one I'm really looking forward to reading this and two will it make my top fantasy books of um, you know my favorite list we'll see I only one way to find out and that's reading it but tonight, um, Clay and I have basically our usual Friday night plans. We're gonna watch The Mandalorian, which we love so much, and then maybe a Christmas movie, and definitely a lot of anime, so we'll definitely watch a Christmas movie at some point this weekend. Um, we're gonna pick up some food, or deliver some food from one of our local restaurants that we love, and just hang out right over there on the couch, enjoy the Christmas tree, and that, that's it, that's the plan. That's the grand old plan. So, welcome to the start of this vlog. I'm already in pajamas and it's like 5.45. <laughs> and I will remain in such pajamas through the end of the weekend, I think. So, hi, welcome. Matilda just ate dinner, but first she went outside. It's chilly out there, girlfriend's gotta stay warm. <laughs> There's something so hilarious to me about her little Sherpa vest. She, she looks like she's about to go to like a ski chalet. She looks like such a Chad, Billy. Christmas tree and community, and a glass of wine, so, unwinding on a Friday night. We got some Tex-Mex and, I don't know where the remote is, but we're gonna put on the Mandalorian. Friday nights are for Mando and Baby Yoda. That's all I'm saying. Clay, what do you think of that episode of the Mandalorian? Oh, it was great. I don't wanna spoil anything, but this is the episode I've been waiting for since I knew this show came out. <laughs> so. It was I so good. Thoroughly enjoyed. Wish it was longer than 30 minutes. I do like the concept of shows not being married to a length. Yeah. So they can tell the story in what would be in their mind, the conceptually perfect length. But, yeah. So they're not adding any filler mm -hmm. and or feel like they don't have enough time. Like they either have to fit something in 20 minutes plus, yeah. you know, 10 minutes of commercials or vice versa. Yeah. So, so they can just make it whatever length that makes the most sense. I mean, <clears throat> narratively, I thought it was a beautiful episode. The Mandalorian is making up for everything that I didn't like of The Last Jedi. Or, well, not The Last Jedi. The, um, the final Star Wars movie. The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> the Last Skywalker. Return of the Last Skywalker. The Return of the King. <laughs> um, They're yeah. back again. The Mandalorian is just so good. I love Star Wars so much, and it's just been so fun to see all of the media that they're able to make within the world not just movies but like tv i also maybe want to check out that animated show it has really good reviews yeah. yeah i've never watched it neither the movie nor the tv show i don't think the movie's very good but the, the, TV, the tv show, show is, is really well rated the guy who does the tv show is doing uh, is a producer on the mandalorian a writer too but we're gonna watch a bit more tv and then we're gonna switch over to anime now and then i will start 
Jade War tonight. Um, but you know, just doing a bit of unwinding and watching television. I ate so much Tex-Mex food. We are watching Bleach and this opening is amazing. If anyone remembers, if you've seen Bleach, it has a screamo portion and it really brings me back to 2006. Isn't that right? I never left 2006, baby. We've now ventured into the bedroom to watch more TV, but uh, we're watching The Boys and ignore all the socks. I apologize. We have a no sock on the floor policy because of Matilda, so sometimes they congregate in high up areas. But anyway, The Boys is really good. We're on episode two of season two and then I'm gonna start reading. All right, I'm finally sitting down to read starting Jade War. I'm very excited about it. Watched a lot of TV tonight, which was honestly great. But now it is back to reading. I'm gonna dive in. Hi friends, good morning all. It is past 10. I literally laid in bed for like an hour just being lazy this Saturday morning. But I'm up and at him now. I'm editing and listening back to my vlog, which I'm uploading today. Hanging out with Matilda. It's gloomy outside, which has really been really gloomy recently. Isn't that right, Millie? Which has been so nice, because winter. But anyway, I'm gonna get back to editing, and I'll check it in a bit. Hi, friends. Happy Saturday. I am exporting my footage right now, so I figured let's chat a little bit. Um, so, first and foremost, I was able to read 20 pages of Jade War last night. Not very much, but I do plan on reading a lot more today. It's raining. I think it's going to rain for a large portion of the day, which is perfect in my opinion for reading. Other things I wanted to mention is I'm currently um, kind of organizing and brainstorming my videos for the rest of the year. This time of year, I know for a lot of creators, is one of my favorite times to make videos. End of the year wrap ups, favorites, stuff like that. They're just so much fun. And one of the videos I was, I'm still prepping for, but have started prepping for is my like most anticipated books of 2021. And I'm getting so excited because I feel like there's so many new books um, coming out just in general, but there are some books that are like re, like reintroducing series again. For example, there's going to be a new Graceling book. Anyone else love Graceling? Graceling was one of the first books I read in middle school that was like true fantasy and like I loved it so much. I've been wanting to reread the series. Graceling, Fire, Bitter Blue, like Kristen Cashore was it for me. Loved it. And she's coming out with a new book, Winter Keep, in January. So I don't know, that got me so hyped. I was like, I need to reread. <laughs> Um, but like that among so many other books too that are coming out, I'm just getting, I'm just getting jazzed for the new year, looking onward, making plans, making lists, love a good list. But yeah, that's basically all I have to say. I'm just like getting excited for 2021 releases, exporting this vlog, watching, uh, watching that happen, enjoying my fake fireplace. And, um, yeah, I need to read, um, this book. But the, I will say the first 20 pages in Fonda Lee style was excellent. Also, the um, introduction, or rather the, what is this word? Like the dedication. She says, for the martial artists I've trained with and learned from, which makes sense. If Fonda Lee knows martial arts, I would not be surprised because her combat is some of the most well-written like hand-to-hand -hand combat I've encountered in fantasy. So makes total sense. But anyway, it looks like my video is almost done. I just wanted to pop in and chat about random stuff this morning. So here we are. Cheers. And uh, I'm going to get dressed here in a moment, but I thought I would enjoy my PJs for a little bit longer. My mom sent me this cookie jar and Clay filled it up with a bunch of candy as a surprise. And there's something about holiday versions of these candies that just taste better, particularly these Reese's. These are so good. There's so much candy in here. Anywho, I'm gonna go watch some football. Well, the Texas football game is on right now. And I'm gonna sit on the couch right there and read Jade War <laughs> and watch football. Reading Jade War, watching football, and our food just arrived. So I guess I'll take a break from reading. But uh, a relaxing Saturday so far. Little shawarma wrap. Some fries and a smoothie, Saturday grub. Hi friends, just basking in a very lazy 
Saturday. I've been reading while watching TV and I have passed 100 page mark of Jade War and I've so quickly just fallen right back into the story. The vibe, the atmosphere of this series is just everything and it honestly is a bit of a palette cleanser from reading The Burning God because how I would describe it is like it is bad people doing bad things but it's kind of fun because it's crime family centered it's like powerful families dueling each other both in like the boardroom and in the in the economy but also in the streets like it has this sort of it has a sort of intense grittiness to it that just makes it intoxicating to read and for context again this primarily follows one family the no peak family within the city of Kekon and you follow a variety of characters from the horn or the leader of the clan to the weatherman whom is the person who kind of controls all the economic and more like day-to-day -day smooth political interests but then you also follow a variety of characters that are in and in the streets everyone is very connected there's some sort of like larger political undercurrent and tension that's happening throughout the entire story as there are two competing families but there's also like day-to-day -day problems emotional family problems like individual interests at play as well it's just so much fun to read and so many of the characters i'm just such a big fan of and it's just such a vibe to be honest um they're turning this into a tv show and i think that is genius because this will just be an excellent tv show i mean i just feel like the setting this sort of like super urban city of kcon with people like driving around and like taking hits out on people it just has this like true crime gang family sort of thing at its center but it's so intelligently written plus it has magic and the whole jade component is fascinating too overall the story essentially takes place after the consequences of the first one there is a bit of a time skip to allow kind of the author to reset the chessboard if you will but it's already very intense some interesting things have happened and i feel like the geopolitical nature of the story is going to expand beyond the city of kikon which i feel like is going to make things particularly spicy um but yeah i just i don't know i just love it. but yeah so far it's so good um and i flew through the first 100 pages and i'm excited to see how things heat up i just feel like it has such well-written combat it has like steamy scenes it has really great like boardroom scenes and then the next chapter you'll have people like negotiating in like a grimy bar like it has so much going for it i just love this series <laughs> i knew i was going to when i picked this up but like i'm still happy to be here if you know what i mean but anyway i'm gonna keep reading i'm hopeful to get to page like 200 today and then try to finish it tomorrow per is like my usual structure for reading vlogs but just wanted to give you guys a reading update quick change we're gonna go on a bit of a walk these doc martens best purchase i've made in years um i've owned them for years and then just i'm wearing the exact same thing with a coat Matilda's gonna put her fleece on. She's ready to go out on the town. <laughs> Little Miss doing her strut, enjoying the neighborhood. Matilda's a haphazard worker. <laughs> garland acquired and we're on our way back. Fresh garland is up. We had these little knit lights which were temporary. Um, but I like this. I also just love the smell of fresh garland. I might put some like twinkle lights in this and then we have even more for now we just put it on the console it needs to be trimmed or maybe we'll put it over there or i was thinking we would put it above the doorway but i don't know right here's for time for now i think we i think threading some lights through it though would be nice so we probably will look to do that and now it's time for bleach 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 making some popcorn to accompany our anime watching this thing is the best random purchase I made in all of 2020. True game changer. Bon appetit, everyone. Watching our first Christmas movie of the season. Queenie's never seen Love Actually, and I haven't seen it since it came out in theaters when my dad accidentally didn't realize it was rated R, and I went to see it with my sister, and I was like eight years old. I decided to not watch it as an adult. <laughs> uh, this is a rom-com. Hugh Grant's in it. Love Hugh Grant. But anyway, we're gonna watch it. And I'm also gonna be painting my nails during this. I'm gonna do a different festive green color. I also have a Pop-Tart. Just a, I'm an adult, I promise. 
I love Pop Tarts. Anyway, time for Love Actually. And now we're watching Bleach post Christmas movie. Hello world, good morning. Happy Sunday. I am up early, well, I'm up at my usual time, but I'm getting my day started early because I'm basically waking up, getting ready, and I'm going to immediately film the two videos I want to film today. I was only able to read about 150 pages of Jade War last night, so I really want to spend a good chunk of today reading, but I'm just someone who likes to knock off the stuff on my to-do list first thing so then I can just do whatever. <laughs> um, so that's kind of my plan there. So I'm gonna film two videos, one of which is gonna be in front of my Christmas tree, fun, and um, do a bunch of reading and then probably just hang out with Clay. We watched Love Actually last night, which was a lot of fun. Love Actually is a movie I saw when I was really, really young and hadn't seen since, and then Clay obviously hadn't seen it at all. Um, it was very 2003. Some storylines really hold up, some storylines do not. Um, I loved the Liam Neeson and the little kid from who's now an adult in the queen's gambit it's funny we watched the queen's gambit over thanksgiving and then to see him as this like adorable little child and love actually was just a funny contrast um but anyway that was great definitely hopefully we'll watch more christmas movies before the holidays are over but we'll sh we shall see we're almost done too with the first major arc within bleach we're on episode 60 so i think we have like three episodes left before we have a huge filler skip so also making excellent progress there but i'm gonna drink my coffee get dressed get ready film and then i'm going to do a bunch of reading because i really want to read jade war like those first 150 pages were excellent i've just been you know lounging which hey it is the weekend so i suppose i am in fact allowed to lounge <laughs> But yeah, I am gonna get dressed now. All right, pals, I just finished filming. I'm gonna put the apartment back together a bit, get some fresh coffee. I think Clay went out to get some Sunday bagels, the ultimate, and then I think we're just gonna relax. I definitely am gonna be reading a bunch of this book today, especially now that I have my filming out of the way. Things are happening. Things are, things are good. Bagel Sunday, everyone. I'm gonna till this year. <laughs> What are you doing? I got dressed. Comfy cozy. I have the Bears game on. You know, separated myself from the disappointment that is the season. And now I'm going to sit down and do reading. I'm going to read um, some Jade War right now. Hello world. I've been having the laziest Sunday on the planet. I've just been reading and napping intermittently. You know, reading 30 pages, having a 15 minute nap as it goes but jade war i've passed the 200 page mark is so good <laughs> it's tricky because everything is so intricate and it's fast-paced and there's so much like politicking happening throughout this story and obviously i don't want to be spoilery in any capacity but the pieces on the board left from the second book it's cool to see them one become more established within their roles either as um weatherman which is more like political office facing like they deal more with the day-to-day -day with businesses the government the stock market foreign policy like you know keeping the money flowing keeping the keeping wall street happy in that way versus like the horn on the other side of the family is kind of like in the streets banging heads together keeping like the day-to-day -day populace happy and also mm -hmm. safe um, and obviously about two years have passed throughout this novel either before and throughout the story I've read so far And so people are getting more more established in their contacts and getting more experienced with like what they're trying to do Based off of the outcome of the last book. So that's really cool. Particularly. I love reading I love reading the female perspectives within the story Shay seeing her just become more confident and her place within the family has just been a wonderful journey to read and her in the second book has just been next level but also another character Wen has always been one of my favorites I think she's such an interesting character I feel like in a lot of stories her place within the story and narrative structure would be overlooked like she would just be looked at as a significant other outside of the family generally liked pretty but not really given a lot of screen time or opportunity to do things that are interesting but Fonda Lee sees her character and doesn't just like 
I don't know, doesn't just write the basic outcome you'd expect. Like, she doesn't need to flesh out one's character. She doesn't need to make her interesting or show how, like, there are there's power in every position, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But she does, and that's what makes this type of story next level because, like, no person is overlooked, no connection is overlooked. And seeing when make her way through and kind of her silent confidence is just so intoxicating and I love her chapters and her character as well. She's um, connected to Hila within this story. She's his wife and so she's in a relationship with Hilo, an outsider, and I don't know, just like her journey as a character, I love. I love them together. I'm just here for it. As I mentioned in my last check-in too, there's like larger influence like outside of the city of Kekon and we see this through Andon's chapters um, which I think is really cool because I feel like we have had up until this point a really hyper-focused view on Kekon, how Jade, the families work in Jaycon, how powers work in Kekon, but that doesn't mean stuff isn't happening beyond city limits and through Andon's chapters we're kind of getting a little more of a view in that. Um, meaning I feel like there's going to be a lot of I'm still very much in the beginning of this book and things are just starting to get set up, but I'm anticipating kind of a build to a very large conflict that could possibly be international. I'm not sure. Obviously, I'm still very much in the beginning of this book. I have quite a bit of it left, about 60%, um, but I'm really liking how things are slowly starting to build. I don't know. I just love seeing the inner workings of this family. It's just fascinating. Like this crime family is just so well set up and it's so interesting and I just know it's gonna get wild soon and Fonda Lee's just kind of like setting the stage and I'm just here for it <sighs> guys it's just so good it's so good hello world I'm just here to do another check-in I've read another 70 pages so I'm just under the 300 page mark so I'm making good progress I'm hopeful I can finish this book tonight I am not sure um, as it's almost 600 pages <laughs> Um, if not, I'll definitely finish it tomorrow, but I'm hoping to get a really good chunk read this weekend, which is the ultimate goal, but ugh, it's so good. It artfully combines like family drama, like family antics at like an extreme scale with also like geopolitical politics. Um, and as I mentioned, some of the chapters are partly now taking place in uh, another country. I think it's supposed to be like an America or just a Western country in general. And culturally, the countries are very different and kind of how they move politically and how they even function like within militarily speaking are very, very different. And you see the geopolitical conflict take place on like large and small scales, obviously with many of our main characters being very politically powerful. They're meeting with Asperian rulers and they have dealings with each other from like trade and military perspective, but culturally they're incredibly different. And you see that conflict as they kind of distrust one another, but you also see it on a small scale because some of the chapters are actually taking place now and Asperian. I wonder if I'm saying that right, but the point is see the cultural and political difference kind of play out in a neighborhood It's a neighborhood made primarily up of immigrants not only from Kekon but from other countries as well But, but you see the social and political structure of Kekon still take place within this neighborhood in a smaller format and seeing One of our characters kind of navigate that is really really interesting And obviously it also just reflects that when someone moves like people are bringing their culture and their traditions with them and how it kind of transforms and how it changes either in subtle ways or in large ways in the new place that they now reside is really, really cool. And I appreciate that the author is kind of including that aspect as well. But anyway, I'm just, I'm about 50% of the way done with this book. It's wild. I'm really, really liking it. It has so much in it and it's so much fun to read. It's such a nice palate cleanser from The Burning God because like, yes, this book is violent and very intense, but it also just has this sort of like, vibe to it that just makes you not want to put it down like it has like all the characters are so powerful and they're just cool like I don't know how else to describe it like they're it's a book about sometimes bad people doing bad things but you're kind of like here for it if you know what I mean <laughs> um but anyway I'm going to keep doing some reading I'm gonna probably take a bit of a break hang out with Clay watch some anime make dinner soon as it's like five o'clock but I'm definitely gonna do more reading tonight I'm hopeful to read at least 500 pages but I'll definitely keep you guys posted gonna grab some more uh, candy being an adult means you gotta have your own holiday candy jar I don't make the rules I just follow them <laughs> I'm not ashamed to admit that I bought some festive <laughs> plaid fleece PJs from Target. They're really comfy. 
10 out of 10 or like $20. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes you just buy festive pajamas for every season. And these are my winter ones. <laughs> Starting dinner a little early tonight because I'm hungry and we only ate that bagel earlier. Um, I'm gonna make like Parmesan crusted chicken. I stole it from a HelloFresh box, like the recipe. That's the thing, if you ever do food subscription services, which I love, um, I also just keep the recipes and then I just reference them <laughs> later. Like if I have the stuff, I don't, you know, I'll just make it again because it usually tastes good. And this is one that's really good from HelloFresh that I'm just making again with stuff and food I have from a from a meat subscription box. <laughs> it's all about the repurpose. Anyway, so I'm gonna start dinner now. It sadly doesn't make, allow me to use my pan. It's all mostly in the oven, alas. But uh, I'll use my pan, I'm sure, tomorrow. We, we move on. This is one of my favorites, one, because it's super easy, but two, it tastes really good. It's, and it's so, it's like one sheet pan meal, which is nice. But yeah, it's just some roasted carrots, chicken breast, salt and pepper, and then the mixture on top is Parmesan pinko and paprika, mounted on top on top of some sour cream, roast in the oven for like 30 minutes, and you're golden, and then make your couscous in there. And a boom, appetit. We are eating dinner and watching Bleach. We're almost done with this arc. We have like two episodes left, so we're gonna finish it tonight. And then we're on to the next Bleach arc, isn't that right? I think our next anime after Bleach, well, we have to finish Dragon Ball Z. And then I think we're gonna watch Demon Slayer, but I know the final season of Attack on Titan is coming out right now, and I've never actually seen Attack on Titan, and it's very popular. Does that interest you, Clay? Very much so. So I know some of you guys have been commenting about that show, so it's definitely on the list, but first we gotta finish Bleach. We finished the first major arc of Bleach. We're now, it goes to episode 63 and we now just skipped to episode 109, but what are your thoughts? What are your feelings of Bleach so far, Clay? I've really liked it. Yeah? I think the storytelling's really good. The pacing's really good for a show in anime. Um, they're still powering up, like, in a, in a satisfying way, but they're yeah. doing it up faster than other show in animes I've seen. Yeah, I definitely feel like the pacing is, I'm, I remember the fighting going faster than some of the Naruto fights, but it's definitely faster, I feel like. Yeah. I, mean, I fights, like episodes 40 too. episodes long. Yeah. Um, I love Naruto, but it the Sasori fight specifically lasted forever. Oh my god. Um, but I, the only thing I would say I hope they do more is like more hand to hand animation. I feel like Naruto's combat animation is much better. Not that Bleach's is bad, it's just that Naruto's is just like exceptional. Yeah. I feel like they started getting the, the Naruto stuff that you're referencing is later in the show. Well, the Naruto Sasuke fight at the end of Naruto was pretty epic. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't know when that occurred in relation to the timing on That's Bleach, true. But. Yeah. I mean, they have plenty of time. Bleach has plenty of time to, you know, pull out some more intense, longer fighting sequences. But so far, so great. It's been really fun to watch Bleach. Really enjoying it. Um, now it's time for ice cream. Ice cream Sunday o'clock, and I think we're gonna switch over to and watch some community, and then I'm gonna get back on the reading train. Matilda is a comfy queen over there. That's right, Millie, I'm talking to you, but I'm sitting down to do more reading, and then I think Clay and I are gonna start that new cult show on HBO, but first I wanna get at least to page like 350 before I watch more TV, and then both Clay and I are gonna do some reading later, but I'm gonna sit down and get to it and I will check in in a little bit. I'm loving Jade War so much. It just has so much good things about it. I mean, like, I'm not kidding. Like, action, yes, politics, all that, but it also just has some of the steamiest, like, romance scenes. Like, it just has such a human component. Like, people are striving to, like, fight for their family and, like, make the best political decisions, but they're still human and they're also striving for human connection either within their family and, like, that sort of love but also outside of their family as well from a you know like a like from a partner emotional perspective and Andon who's one of my favorite characters in the first book he's just such a soft boy just like growing up trying to figure things out and um I particularly love his chapters and Wen who I mentioned previously I just think they're both such well-crafted like softer characters that have still such strength in the story and I'm just obsessed obsessed with them but now clay and i are gonna watch a show about cults <laughs> so i'm taking a break from andon and crew 
and we're gonna watch a show about colts so that's the plan and then i'm gonna get back to reading and clay's gonna read his book too the mercies mm -hmm. but yeah all right toodaloo honestly a lot of this cult is just people wanting a ufo to take them away from earth and i kind of get it <laughs> like hmm. Sounds pretty cool. I mean, I'm not really looking to join a cult, but I'm just saying, like, of all the cult documentaries I've watched, this might have been the one I would have fallen for in the 70s. I don't know if I'd fallen for it, but if someone's like, you want to go out in the woods and talk about UFOs, I'd be like, that sounds like a kind of fun weekend. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll meet you in Boulder. It's very late. I've read a really good amount of this book. It is getting really wild I'm not gonna lie it's so interesting it's like public attention and like it's combining even like public sentiment as again sort of the ties and the conflict is kind of expanding up with the family to include local international interests as well and it's just becoming so good while still maintaining that family connection and that family heart at its core I can't stop reading, but it's getting really late. But I'm gonna keep going. Again, I'm trying to get to at least page 500 and then I'll be able to finish it in the next couple of days. But just wanted to do a bit of a check-in and let you know that I am staying up past my bedtime. But who's surprised? Hey friends, and welcome to the end of the vlog. The next day, I just wanted to quickly pop in and let you know how much I was able to read. As I did stay up really late last night, getting to just over 500 pages of Jade War by Fonda Lee. <sighs> this book is so good. I just feel like she's been able to increase the ante of the stakes, like creating sort of like a larger geopolitical aspect of it has just made it even better. Also, also, I've already talked about a lot of the characters I stand from Wen to Andon. They have been faves of mine since last book, including Shay. Hilo is a character I've always respected and liked, but I was never like a Hilo stan. I feel like a lot of people are really into Hilo, but I will say he's really grown on me in book two and has quickly risen the ranks of being one of my personal favorite characters within the series, but now it's less like I have favorites. It's more that like everyone's a fave. Oh, it's just so good. Anywho though, I flew through 500 pages. I am loving this book so much. Like this is the kind of, I don't know, I don't read a lot of urban fantasy, but like when I do, I want it to be this. Like it's just, it's just so good. But anyway, I clearly loved it. <laughs> loved every second. I hope you guys check out Jade City and then Jade War by Fonda Lee because they're amazing. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and I will see you soon with another one soon. Bye.